Good morning folks, good morning guys, good morning internet. I'm EJ with another video. Um, this time we are going to be taking a look at um, a prompt that I did for Sketch Zone, uh, this Discord group that I'm in. Uh, uh, Matt came up with a weekly prompt called Fantasy Landscape and the idea was for us to draw a uh, fantasy landscape so that was what our assignment was for this particular week um, and I could tell you right now that I botched that assignment like I did so horrible in that assignment it's not even funny and I will explain why I messed up that assignment um, but for now let's go ahead and let me go ahead and explain what's going on in this scene um, I wanted a 3D setup for this one because I wanted shadows. Um, well, let me explain by explaining what's going on. Uh, in the scene right now, what I what is going on in Blender is that I fired up the Ant Landscape plugin. It's a free plugin for Blender. It creates landscapes, and then I edited that landscape so that I could create these columns, which you see these tall columns going up into going up from the mountain area and then I duplicated that landscape and flip it on its side which is what is going on here right now now the idea or my idea for doing this um, this setup is that I wanted those columns to create these cool looking shadows right so I wanted a landscape with some cool looking shadows and that was basically my idea for this fantasy landscape. I wasn't really sure what the columns were going to be. I, I didn't kind of have anything in mind, you know. Um, I kind of thought of combining some, like, a futuristic thing with the columns together with the landscape and together with the shadows. Um, so that's kind of like what I have in mind. But it didn't really come out that way. And this is the reason why I botched the assignment and I messed up the assignment. Because my original intention of you know coming up with this cool looking shadows didn't even really show up in the final rendered image. You know, like when I did the first render, which is going on right now, I'm rendering the first run through of the scene. And I can't really find any good shadows. You know? Like I uh, in my head for you know in my head I thought it it would create like this uber cool crisscross shadowy thingy but it really wasn't showing up you know and I kind of moved it around a little bit just to see if I could come up with something else but in the end it just it never it never came you know and really it was the shadows is is what I was after you know uh, the columns even though they're part of the image I, I didn't really I don't really remember if if I have something in mind for them or you know or whatnot eventually I ended up making it into like this futuristic thing which is what I said earlier you know I kind of thought of doing something futuristic with it but it doesn't read that way um, which I'll explain once I, I start sketching. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> this fantasy landscape did not turn out very well for me. This homework did not turn out very well for me. It did not look like a fantasy landscape. Um, the end image looks like this group of characters are walking underneath an overpass that's full of graffiti. That's pretty much what it ended up looking like. I mean this area that we're taking a look at it just looks like an overpass like the under part of the overpass with all the columns and all these bridge looking areas and yeah that's pretty much what ended up happening. But you'll see when I'm doing my sketch that that's not really what I had in mind. Um, so yeah. Um, You'll see in a second. So I'll pick up the narration once we start the whole sketching thing.
Okay, so this is the end render from Blender with all the landscape and all the bridge looking parts, <laughs> the columns. And basically I took the image and uh, put a layer on top of it, a gray layer, so that uh, I could wash out the rendered layer so that it's not too strong. And then on top of this layer I'm gonna do my sketch layer. And once I start the sketching part you'll see there's that discord group that I'm part of uh, sketch on. Uh, I think I was trying to check to see what the requirements are or whatnot. I'm, I'm not really sure why I was pulling the, the chat window up. Um, but now I'm about to start my sketch and you can see once I start doing my sketch you'll see that I, I kind of have a futuristic thought in my head. Um, which is ironic because the prompt called for fantasy landscape and fantasy typically denotes like something in the past. Uh, but in my head, in my head I kind of wanted to combine these fantasy creatures that I sketched out. Um, I kind of wanted to combine them with something futuristic. Um, so yeah, but it again, like I said, it didn't come out that way. But the characters uh, are probably my favorite part out of the whole scene. Um, just like the last video that I posted. Um, oh, before I go with that, I've started drawing the columns. Um, so I guess let me talk about the columns. But in the columns, uh, as you can see, especially in the left one, you see some stuff sticking out. And so what I have in mind are, are kind of like structures that you would kind of see in a futuristic setting, kind of like Horizon Zero Dawn. So, I mean, you can see right now it's all looking robotic and funky and it looks like there's some spikes coming out, but then at the same time it looks like it's mechanical. Uh, so yeah, that was like my idea, was to combine like this futuristic setting with fantasy creatures, which is really out of place in all honesty because they're two d different genres, right? I mean, they don't really combine. Fantasy is set in the past, typically sometimes with magical creatures or mostly with magical cre creatures set in the past but you never ever really set it in the future or at least we you never put it in a setting where there's like mechanical stuff you know scientific stuff um but that's kind of like what i was trying to do you know i kind of thought that the idea might be cool you know you have this cool looking sort of robotic sort of mechanical structure together with these fantasy creature creatures right and it would make a cool juxtaposition or cool um dimorphism <laughs> that's not the word i'm looking for um kind of like it would make a cool opposite you know but again like i said it didn't really come out that way uh after I sketched in all these characters and after I painted everything, it just these mechanical looking columns that I originally intended to be like mechanical, scientific, whatever, they just pretty much ended up looking like they're bridges, like they're stone bridges of some sort, you know? Like these two characters are walking some underpass or whatnot. And so when it comes to like me fulfilling the requirement of the prompt, which is fantasy landscape, I didn't really fulfill that part of the assignment you know um i kind of sort of did because i have fantasy creatures but the fantasy creatures which these characters that i'm drawing right now these fantasy characters that i'm drawing right now they're not like the mainstay of the image you know obviously like the main focus of the image is the landscape and not so much as them um but these characters are pretty much the only thing that makes this whole thing look fantasy wise you know so yeah the assignment was a fail but these these characters that I did are not like I love these characters I actually visited these characters a few more times uh, throughout the year so I think I got this assignment or weekly prompt maybe early of this year like sometime in the spring or something and after that, you know, I've drawn these characters numerous times for different sketch zone prompts. 
so the characters are like really cool to visit like I have no idea what their stories are or I really don't have like any thoughts as to what they're all about in my head you know I just you know accidentally drew a little kid with a demon guy sitting um, together with this horse looking peacock creature you know that doesn't exist in real life obviously and so yeah um since i've been drawing them notoriously back and forth you know all throughout the year it, it'd be kind of interesting if i make like a full-blown uh illustration with them like a fully defined illustration um and it would also be cool if i could come up with a story for them because i really don't have a story for what they are or what they're all about you know and it would be cool if I could come up with something um, that goes along with my original idea, which is, you know, the setting is this futuristic setting with some fantasy elements to it. So, yeah, it, it would definitely be cool if I come, could come up with a story for them. But anyways, enough about them. Uh, let's talk about what's going on in the scene. And what's going on in the scene is my standard uh, random mech brush, which I always do. I would just throw it in there just to put in some colors to get started with you know um, I obviously did a bunch of colors uh, green color for the ground and some dark purplish for the buildings I really should have gone with the less saturated color but I ended up with saturated colors and then now I'm just photo bashing some photos in just to get some form of color in there um, which after I'm done with all of this, um, I'm gonna combine them all in one layer and smudge them all so that I have a base paint to paint on. Right now though, what I'm doing is that I'm selecting the background sky so that I could cut out parts of the photos that I photo bashed in. So I'm gonna bring up like one photo and then cut out the area that I lassoed and then I'm gonna do do it for all of the photos um, which I think I just finished doing um, and oh I totally forgot I did this I added atmospheric perspective so I could fade out the background so that it's not as strong and that's what that blue is and then when do I merge all of them I'm trying to think I'm trying to see what else I did okay so I added shadows again. I don't know why I added shadows. It's meant to be lighter than what they what it is because it's supposed to be in the back. And then I'm lassoing the dark areas in the ground. Oh, I changed the colors. Okay, that was kind of cool. Uh, so the shadowed part was warm colors, was in warm tone. I obviously needed for it to go to green because it's a green ground with green grass and so I lassoed it and changed the hue and now I merge it in one layer and I'm beginning to just smudge everything down or blend everything uh, into recognizable shapes but you can see right now based on all the colors that I put in that it's it really starts to look like an overpass with graffiti uh, I mean even without all the blending that I've done yet and without the detailing that I've yet done yet I can just tell just from now that it just it looks like an overpass you know with graffiti but it's cool <laughs> it's okay that I made that mistake because at least I came up with these cool characters that I'm still scratching as to what their backstory is but it it seems like it would be a cool backstory or it seems like they would have a cool backstory
Okay, so I'm really surprised at the amount of time that I spent um, blending and smudging everything down. Um, I really thought it went by quick and then I, I detailed, but it, I mean, it's looking like I didn't really do a whole lot of detailing. Um, and that kind of makes sense in my head because the columns are pretty much all set and done just by the look of it. Um, and create a crash. That's the reason why you just saw my desktop. I had to reopen it again. Um, but yeah, just by looking at this, it looks like the majority of the detailing that I did didn't even occur with the columns. Um, so maybe if I had gone back and really fully spent some detailing part on the columns, then maybe it would look more robotic rather than looking just like columns but it looked like I didn't really spend a whole lot of time on it so yeah uh, I guess for the most part I just pretty much detailed the, the two characters and their pet horse peacock <laughs> thing um, so yeah, I, and I'm saying peacock because that's kind of like my inspiration for the face. It kind of looks like peacock because of the thing that sticks out in the head that I'm going to draw eventually. And when I saw that it was shaped like a peacock, I ended up changing the tail. Because right now the tail is pretty much looking like it's a horse. And I ended up changing the tail to make it look like the kind of tail that you'll see on birds. So yeah. But right now, I'm doing like the foreground area. I kind of had in mind that there's like a mound of flowers in the foreground area. Uh, you'll uh, you'll see uh, earlier in the video when when I was doing the landscape in Blender, you see me put like a globe at the very front, and that's what I wanted the globe to be was like this mound of foliage, basically. That's what I had in mind when when I put that globe in so yeah and in the end the globe didn't even really read <laughs> I pretty much just kind of have to wing the whole mound of foliage thing but now I'm working on the characters just about the only good thing <laughs> out, of, out of this whole image is these characters right here because they're really interesting for me because like I mentioned I've been re redrawing these characters over and over again we really no clue as to what they're all about, but I, I just love drawing them. So it's a little girl with this guy with a horn in his head. Uh, and again, like I mentioned, I have no idea what their story is. I don't know if they're related or if they're friends or if she's hostage or if he's hostage. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> he could be like a slave or something. Uh, so I don't I really don't know what their stories are. But they're cool characters, nonetheless. So yeah, exploring them every now and then is is fun for me, you know, because they they would cross my mind every now and then, and I would be like, oh yeah, let let me think of like drawing them in a different setting or something, which I've done quite often this year. So yeah, and yeah, it looks like I actually went back with the columns I didn't realize that I went and did some detailing the columns because I, I really thought that I was done and yeah it looks like I'm adding highlights which even those highlights doesn't really make it clear that it's mechanical it still looks like graffiti it looks like a cool graffiti though I gotta admit I mean whatever that column is you know it, it looks like it has some cool graffiti in it. Looks like Banksy came by and visited and did some artwork in my artwork. So yeah. But yeah, this piece is almost done. Uh, I'm really surprised, again, like I said, at the amount of time I did, uh, at the amount of time I spent on detailing, which apparently I didn't spend a whole lot amount of time detailing. I just I did the highlights pretty much. Um, so yeah, in a way that this was kind of cool because it went by quick and I didn't have to think much about it. Um, but yeah, I'm adding some color dodge 
uh, in front of the character so they get highlighted a little bit more so so that they could read a little bit better um, it's a little too bright obviously because it looks like it got a little too white but it, it's not too bad you know it's not glaring or anything and there's that little peacock detail that I added on top of the head of the creature which kind of makes it look like a bird um, or a peacock and then I am you know sharpening its horns which my inspiration for that was an elephant you know uh, but instead of putting the horns on the face I ended up putting it lower in his body and then uh, kind of detailing the whole saddle area and all the bags that this characters are carrying and then the girl just got drawn really quick that girl just came out of nowhere which is like boom done I didn't have to spend a whole lot of time on her now that, that was pretty cool and then of course I'm looking at it from afar to see if they read and then looking back at it they don't read very well <laughs> it doesn't look like there's characters there so I, I don't know what my line of thinking was when I was doing it but yeah and then of course I added I changed the tail to make it look like it's a bird a bird's tail you know kind of goes along with the with the peacock head and then I'm kind of just working the background area just to kind of make it the shapes read easier and then here's the guy with the horns whose backstory I, I don't know um, I spent a little bit more time on him um, I figured he is carrying or wearing some form of vest that has some pockets in it and some stuff that he's carrying um, like little pouches and whatnot and that's what all that area around his stomach is and then I'm he's wearing a skirt I just now realized that I put a skirt on him that's what that orange looking outline is it's kind of indicate that he's wearing a skirt above his pants and then I just did the arms which I'm gonna draw a rope that goes to the horse creature to his hands to kind of indicate that you know this guy's leading this horse creature and that's it this fantasy not so fantasy landscape is done this is the last video for this year I will be seeing you guys next year like and subscribe good night